Hey there, it's Boots Iron here. This is a Maytag tumble dryer, something that I've never seen before. I've taken some bits off it, I've taken the front fascia, fascia, or fascia off it to get to the condenser unit, so it's obviously a condenser tumble dryer. And I've taken the top off because it didn't have a cable on it, so I've rewired it, and I'm just going to start playing to start now. So you might join me for that. It's a Type TD44A, which I guess stands for tumble dryer, and it's a model, let's turn that around, it's a model MDE 5605AES. Inside is the manual by the looks of things. Use and care. Let's have a look at these. Use and care. That's not for that. That's the steam iron installation instructions for a tumble dryer. From machines with LC display. That looks like that might be it. Um, that's for some old iron, it's nothing to do with this, let's get rid of all that. But Maytag user and care guide, I'm guessing that's all for this machine. Okay, put that aside. Looking inside, it's um, it's mostly stainless. Uh, put a magnet on the sides, the bits that look stainless are. You see a magnet there, it doesn't uh, stick to it. There is st steel, steel drum, steel back I presume, yeah, but the bits that look stainless are stainless. So front, sides, door, the lower fascia and the top. So there's quite a bit of stainless steel in it. It's a bit of a kind of clunky looking thing. I thought it was a dishwasher when I saw it first because that's what it looks like. I thought it was kind of a semi-industrial dishwasher. Let's have a look. It's got a switch in there by the looks of things that's been made up. That doesn't look original to me. Just a screw with a bit of plastic on it. Uh, instructions there how to drain the water by the looks of it, how to open the filter, let's do that, so that just pops out and there's a wee bit of fluff on that, I'm not going to fuss, let's uh, pop that back in, it's quite, quite a sensible design, air goes down there, this machine is very very clean, that's what, you know, it's got dust outside it, but inside it's very clean, I've had a look in here before and it, it doesn't look like it's really ever been used, that's what I would say. I'm used to finding these things, as you've seen in my other videos, and if you have a look, you know, these would be completely filthy. But this, it looks different, you know, it doesn't look to be, it looks, that, that looks to have been hand filled. Somebody going along with a silicone gun or some kind of a large silicone gun and putting that sealant in there manually. It doesn't, it doesn't have any kind of water drips or anything on it, really. And stainless, st stainless is a dodgy old, not dodgy, but a tricky material to keep clean. It tends to like dirt. What I thought was really bizarre about it, maybe maybe something's missing from it, but I don't know, the lower fascia panel was screwed on with two screws at the bottom and nothing on the top. So the only way to open it was to either unscrew these two screws at the bottom and and take off the fascia and it wasn't screwed on properly at the top or to um or to bend it down and you don't want to do that. So I wonder is it meant to be hinged on one side because it looks like there's a lower hinge there but there's nothing on the bottom so I'm not entirely sure and given that it was screwed on I'm not entirely sure what way it's meant to be. Looking inside it feels a bit rumbly but it feels like it's rumbling on the, the, the things that support it underneath down by the motor, the rollers I guess you could call them. Okay a bit of drips there but that's I think it's been left in a shed where it was abused you know externally. Um, Okay, I don't know if that's on or off. It's got a sticker there, a dint there. The top had a dint on it like something too heavy was left on it. Four minutes into the video already. Yikes, I've got a lot to say about this one. Okay, power board there. Bare exposed cables. Granted the outside is earthed, but bare exposed cables right beside everything that's metal. Big capacitor I think there rather than a filter. I think that is some kind of a filter over there. Not entirely sure. It's it's it should have a filter on it, and it also has a it has a fuse down here on the live. But I don't know where that fuse wire goes. It goes to the capacitor. So the capacitor has a fuse on the motor. Okay. Over here is your control board. So the first thing I noticed was this little board attached up has like a data cable coming over here, and I think that goes down to the lower front. To what I think is some kind of a sensor arrangement in there. So either water or something like that down there. 
back up here. So that's your main power switch, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's the main that's the main power switch there. I can feel it on the other side. You've got a load of relays on there, a couple of capacitors, a big chip there. It has an LCD display, so it needs a bit of a bit of thinking power behind it. And there's another, if you can see in there, there's another board behind the LCD, which makes sense. So let's fire it up and see what it does. Uh, we're going live. Click. Screen lights up. Time dry program, normal cooling, temperature low, time 30, start stop, P3 menu. Anti-crease, normal cooling, buzzer. Anti-crease, one hour, temperature low, one. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing here. It's just scrolling through stuff automatically. Is it on? Yeah, that was it was on. So okay, I turned it off there. Um, this is is that oh, start stop start. Oh okay. And we're off. There's nothing in it. Don't know if it has any kind of sensor. Well, it might have some kind of a sensor actually because of that data cable down there. Interesting. I'm guessing a look in the manual might help me to understand how it works, but uh, I reckon with things like this, if you can't figure out how they work just by looking at them, the manual will help to some degree, but it shouldn't help you with the basic operation. dry program I'm guessing which is 30 minutes no 44 so it's gone down by a minute there Ooh. stopped overflow fault indication there's no moisture in it so something's wrong with a sensor somewhere so there could be a problem overflow where would it think there's water if the pump isn't working maybe don't know if I just press start again though it just starts again I'll press stop Nope, stop doesn't do anything. Four, three, thank you. So it did run for a minute there before it knocked out. Like, I don't know what this time up here is versus this time down here. Maybe that's temperature? 30, 30 won't dry very much though. It's a Maytag Euro line. I saw a date code on it somewhere without touching anything inside. Down on the board. You can see there's a date there of 211101. There's a date there of 211101. It's clicked off again. Same fault, overflow. It doesn't, I don't know if that's warming up at all. Right, okay. Fault indication, overflow. I don't know anything about this machine. I really don't know if it's worth keeping. I don't know any, like I know nothing about it. So if you've got any ideas, tell me about them. This is as much as this video is going to have. Uh, I'm not going to go through fault finding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post this video and people generally are quite good. I'll read the manual in the meantime. That might help me a bit. Don't think there's anything simple like overflow. I presume water comes in here. If you look at the back again, I'll turn this off on the wall so that I can touch it. If you look at the back here, water comes up from the pump. There's a pump in the bottom. In the, below the condenser, below the level of the condenser, water gets pumped up, it goes in here, then under here, and then back into the top, into this drawer. And I guess if you want to plumb it in to a drain, you can just pull this hose off up here and put it into a drain, like a washing machine drain, and that will, it means you don't have to empty it manually. It says on it it's a graded appliance from 2003, so it was second hand in 2003. 
G for graded, 2 for second grade or something, I don't know, second rate. Bearings sound okay, don't know if the heater element works. It has a fan outlet on the back, or a vent outlet on the back. Looks, it's, it's just dusty, but the machine itself was dusty. It also has some brackets there. Wonder are they some kind of a hinge? They're they're just kind of screwed on. They're they're just they're really just hanging there. Um, or they might be some kind of a stacking kit or something. I don't I don't know what that is. What else can I say about it? There's a there's a date code on there thirty nine oh one on that. Tally's thirty nine week thirty nine. What else can I say? Overflow error. So yeah, let's pull this off. If it was going to overflow, it would overflow back down that drain there. I'm guessing it could, the bearings are on the back, so it'd be a bit of a work to take the back off. Yeah, everything's attached to the back. Um, let me know what you think. It might be something really simple, like a little float switch or something stuck down there. You can tell me in the comments as well if you think it's... Uh, worth saving. It's quite an interesting machine in that it's 20 years old. Looks, you know, industrial modern, I guess you might call it. The electronics seem to work, although it might have a fault in the electronics that means it doesn't work, or that that's what's broken on it. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. This isn't one of those kind of, it's not really the same question of whether I should tr throw a brick in it or not, because tumble dryers and bricks, they don't really do anything interesting at all. Let's just put my hand in and see if it's... Yeah, there's... I can feel there's heat in the air in there, so that's pretty cool. Okay. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at that. Actually, I didn't notice that. Um, so, there's a 13 amp, 2800 watt model with 13 amp fuse, because I'm guessing you put a fuse in the back. But there's also a 400 volt three phase. And the motor, it's 300 watts. So those are the elements. You can get a three-phase element on it. And the motor's just at 50 hertz, so it's uh, it's a capacitor start. So it must be an induction motor. Is that right? I'm not sure. Pretty neat. And I think you can reverse the door because there's kind of a... looks like it's a magnetic sensor. Or just a magnet. Yeah, it feels, it feels like there's a magnet in there. Okay, let me know what you think. What should I do? Is there something really obvious on this one? Thanks for watching. See you later.